Mickey voiced to Lucas? No, because George Lucas sold uh, Star Wars to Disney. The Great Mouse. Ha ha. You want to be a star, don't you? Whiskey or vodka? Ah, come on, man. I'm a whiskey man. Single malt whiskey for the win. I got a fucking lab in Edinburgh, Scotland. They, they'd kick me out of the country if I said vodka. Kick my ass. You like vodka? Go to the, uh, go to the Vitalik side. Get out of here. Ah. Charles, what are your thoughts on projects such as DAG? DAG? A, a, a cyclic graph, you know, directed a cyclic graph. Is that weird? Is that a project? It's, it's a technique. It's a thing. It's a structure in graph theory. Working with the U.S. military. All right, Rob. Everybody, put on your hats. Put on your hats. We're going to go on an adventure together. We're going to go splunking. Have you all heard of the Gateway Project? <gasps> you haven't? Well, let's go splunking. Gateway Project. Womp, 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 or the gateway program. All right, there we go. Old document from the CIA. So let's bring this up, guys. Recently declassified. So the U.S. government is a leviathan. And as a leviathan, it looks into a metric fuck ton of shit, including but not limited to our good friend from the Department of the Army, U.S. Army Operational Group, U.S. Army Intelligence and Security Command from Fort Meade, Maryland, where Big Black is, the NSA headquarters. June 9th, 1983, the analysis, analysis and assessment of gateway process. How about that? You never thought you'd see this here, did you? Ha-ha! So basically, let me read off what they were trying to do. You tasked me to provide an assessment of the gateway experience in terms of its mechanics and ultimate practicality. As I set out to fulfill that task, it soon became clear that in order to assess the validity and practicality of the process, I needed to do enough supporting research and analysis to fully understand how and why the process works. Frankly, sir, that proved to be an extremely involved and difficult business. Initially, based on conversations with a physician who took the gateway training with me, I had recourse to the biomedical models developed by Itzhak Bentov to obtain information concerning the physical aspects of the process. Then I found it necessary to delve into various sources for information concerning quantum mechanics in order to be able to describe the nature and function of human consciousness. I had to be able to construct a scientifically valid and reasonably lucid model of how consciousness functions under the influence of the brain hemisphere synchronization techniques employed by Gateway. Once this was done, the next step involved recourse to theoretical physics in order to explain the character of the time-space dimension and the means by which expanded human consciousness transcends it in achieving Gateway's objectives. Finally, I again found it necessary to use physics to bring the whole phenomena of out-of-body states into the language of physical science to remove the stigma of its occult connotations and to put it in a frame of reference suited to objective assessment. What the fuck is this guy doing? Well, apparently he, this uh, commander, is studying out-of-body experiences using the gateway program. What the hell? What is, what is going on here? Gateway and hemisphere, lasers, frequency following responses. Whoa. Whoa. Consciousness and energy grid. Whoa. Oh, no. This is the absolute and infinity. What is this guy? He was, he was doing stuff. Holograms, stylized rendition of simple Taurus. Cosmic egg? The fuck is a cosmic egg? 
Oh, whoa. Whoa. Actual government document at Fort Meade, like one of the most classified places you can go. So what's the conclusion? There is a sound rational basis in terms of physical science parameters for considering Gateway to be a plausible in terms of its essential objectives. Institutional insights of not only personal, but of a practical and professional nature would seem to be within bounds of reasonable expectations. However, a phased approach for entering the gateway experience in an accelerated mode would seem to be required if the time needed to reach advanced states of altered consciousness is brought within a more manageable limits from the standpoint of establishing an organized organization-wide exploration of gateways potential. The most promising approach suggested in the foregone study involves the following steps. He's going through those steps, huh? Okay, look at all these things. But here's the most interesting. Number J, be intellectually prepared to react to possible encounters with intelligent non-corporeal energy forms when space-time boundaries are exceeded. So what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is the U.S. government looks into everything. Even if you don't think they look into it, they look into it. There's some guy, in this case, I think a lieutenant colonel, that was tasked to go hang out with a bunch of hippies and learn the gateway program. And he wrote a classified memo that's now declassified, sans some stuff, uh, about how we should be prepared once we go through this to have interactions with non-corporeal entities. So are they working on DAGs, directed acyclic graphs? You betcha. Are they working on Gateway Program 2.0? Oh, God, yes. In some lab, somewhere, some way, there is a guy who's like, I want to talk to DMT aliens. It's actually a thing. Uh, so does it mean the project is great or the technique is great? No, not necessarily. It just means that they're researching it because there's millions of people floating around and billions of dollars they got to spend. And somewhere along the way, somebody gets interested in one of these things and they go down a crazy, crazy, crazy rabbit hole. Isn't that fun? Yeah, you didn't think I was going to bring that in. Ah, Gateway program. How about that? Really cool read. Some great YouTube videos talking about it as well. I'll tell you guys about Fog Bank next time.